In this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom post types, custom fields, and then make them look awesome on the front end of your website. Have you ever looked at WordPress and said, I want to have some type of content that doesn't really fit in a post, doesn't really fit in a page. I want it to be separate. And this is creating custom content containers for your website. This is a way of doing this with WordPress. Now, if you're a website developer, it's going to open up the possibilities, uh, what you can do with a WordPress based website. And if you're a developer and developing websites for clients, you're now going to be able to take on more complex projects. But I have some great news for you. Even if you're not a website developer, just follow what I'm going to show you in this tutorial and you're going to see how easy it is and your mind will just explode with all of the different things that you can use WordPress for that you might not have realized before. So let's just go ahead and get started. But before we get started, hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button, then click on that notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos just like this. Okay, so this video is going to be kind of two part. In the beginning, it's just going to be a little presentation style, I'll explain a few things. And then that will set us up for jumping on into a WordPress website and doing all of this cool stuff. So first, I just wanted to go over what you can expect in this video. And you probably already know that we are going to go over how to create custom post types. And we're going to learn a little bit about that in a moment. And then we're going to go over how to create custom fields. And we're going to explain what that is. I'm going to show you how easy it is to accomplish that. Then we're going to create a template and this is where we're going to make this new custom post type in these different custom fields look great on the front end of your website. So first let's talk about what are custom post types. Now the acronym for that is CPTs. If you ever see that related to WordPress, just know we're saying custom post types. And essentially what they are is just a separate container for content on your website. So right now we have pages by default and we have posts by default, but you might want other types of content that doesn't quite fit in a page and doesn't quite fit in a post, but just think of it as a content container. And what's crazy about this is you're actually already most likely using custom post types on your website. You might not be realizing it. Some of the plugins that you use are going to add these and also some themes. It's best when it's done with a plugin already do this. So a great example of this is WooCommerce. WooCommerce adds a product custom post type where you would go and you'd put your products because obviously you would want that separate from posts and pages. And there's an assortment of plugins that do this. I use a learning management system on my website. It creates a separate custom post type for courses and for lessons and much more than that but you can do this all yourself. So some of the most common custom post types are if you wanted to create a real estate website and list those houses for sale, well, that doesn't fit in a post, that doesn't fit in a page, you would create a custom post type, just like we're gonna do in this video. Maybe a portfolio, actually, I'll just let you know now, we're gonna create a portfolio in this video. We're gonna create a custom post type for that and the custom fields for that. Another common custom post type is events. You're gonna want that separate in any type of listing. There's a lot of listing WordPress themes. Well, all they're doing is adding custom post types and you can create your own listing website if you wanted to. Okay, uh, so let's talk about what custom fields are. So we already talked about custom post types are these separate content containers. Well, custom fields are more like data containers within those individual custom post types. So the main point of that is to have separation of data. So when we're making the custom post type look beautiful on the front end, so think of a real estate listing custom post type. Well, you would create a custom field for all the little data points for each home. 
And then when we're making it look great on the front end, we have this separation of the data. I can put the price here. I could put the square foot here. I could do whatever I want to do with it because the data is separated into these custom fields and I can style it differently. I can do pretty much whatever I want. And you're actually uh, already using custom fields. You might not realize it. So uh, there's different field types when you create custom fields because we have different type of data that we would want to store in them. So you're gonna have the most common, which is gonna be a text-based field type and that can accept any type of text. There's a number field type and that would limit it to you just putting a number in there and you can even put some rules on the size of that number as far as characters, uh, decimal points and all that kind of stuff. A image container, a URL container, and that's gonna be important if you want to link out to anywhere, which we're gonna do in this portfolio we're gonna create, and a date. There's actually many different field types. These are just some of the most common ones, but I wanted to highlight these so that you understand that in these custom fields we would assign a field type. Okay, so let's talk about some of the best tools to create custom post types and custom fields. So you have these all-in-one solutions, and the two biggest names in the all-in-one solutions are pods. I've actually made a video specifically on pods before. And so an all-in-one solution is gonna allow you to do everything in the one tool. So it's gonna allow you to create the custom post type and custom fields all in one tool. So that's pods. Pods is free. You can go to plugins, add new, just search for pods. It's going to be right there. And then the other one is a paid solution called Toolset. Now Toolset actually takes it a lot further than pods does. You're going to be able to do more with the visual way that you interact with the custom fields. And there's some secret sauce to what Toolset has when it comes to looking at the different data that you have in your custom post types. So for searching and having custom search parameters and stuff like that, it does that, uh, does that amazingly. It's something that they call views. I will have a video soon on Toolset. I've been waiting on them to build some things and they've actually just recently started building those. Uh, so Toolset is the paid solution for it. I don't remember the cost off the top of my head right now because uh, they've changed it a bunch over the past uh, 12 months or so. And then there are just separate individual tools. So you can have a separate tool to make the custom post types, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna use a free tool for that. And then you would use a separate tool to add those custom fields, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna use ACF, which is the acronym. It stands for Advanced Custom Fields. If you do a search for that in the WordPress plugin directory, you'll see that this is being used on over a million websites. This by far is probably the most, most widely used custom field solution for WordPress. They have a free version and a paid version. This video, we're just gonna be using the free version of this. So let's move forward. So if custom post types are so easy to add, like I'm saying, and custom fields are so easy to create, then why are you just hearing about this now? Or why doesn't everyone use this and do this? And the answer to that question is because traditionally, it's been very hard for a non-coder, non-designer and non-coder to actually make this data look good on the front end of your website. It's been very hard. You have to do lots of hard coding, PHP, and all this kind of stuff. Your, your knowledge has to be way beyond just someone that uses WordPress with the great tools that we have now to make easy, uh, make beautiful websites very easily with minimal learning curve. That was not possible before. They're very, very hard to style, very hard to make it look good for the average person, just like me and just like you. This is a channel for non-techies, which kind of means we wanna get from point A to point B as fast as possible. But thank goodness, we live in the era of page builders for WordPress, and there's even a new twist on it called theme builders. And what a theme builder is, is it allows you to create a 
design template that gets applied to all of your uh, your data in a particular custom post type. So what that means is if you're making that real estate listing uh, custom post type and you want it to look good, you can now use your theme builder to make that look good. And we're gonna do that in this video. So theme builders really started to gain steam in 2017, we're almost done with 2018 today, and this has become a popular feature in page builders. So for this video, we're going to use Elementor Pro. Now you have to use the paid version of any page builder in that has a theme building solution because there aren't any free theme building solutions out there to make these custom post types look good. So everything in this video is accessible to everybody, but when it comes time to making it look good on the front end, you're gonna need to use a page builder with a theme builder built into it. This video, we're gonna use Elementor Pro, but I will also make mention that if you're a Beaver Builder user, you could purchase Beaver Themer and you can do the same thing. I have a video on that, but also Divi is adding these capabilities as well. I don't expect to see those till 2019. And lastly, let me give an honorable mention to Breezy, which has this already in their paid version of Breezy. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump on in and get started. Okay, so this is the plugin we're gonna use for our custom fields. It's right here, Advanced Custom Fields, and you can see it has over a million active installations. And by far, it is the most well-known tool for adding custom fields. And then we're gonna use this plugin right here, and it's also very well-known and very popular. It's called Custom Post Type UI, CPT UI, and this is used on 600,000 websites. Now, if you don't have Elementor, I have a link down below. You can visit wpcrafter.com slash Elementor, and it will take you on over to uh, Elementor's website, so you can check that out. It's the most affordable page builder that includes a theme builder okay and so here's the particular page here for their theme builder I'll also link in the video description box down below some of their recent blog posts related to their theme builder creating custom post types and custom fields okay so let's move forward so here I go I've got this website right here all ready to go and right here's what it looks like on the front end just a basic install with uh, Astra theme on there and Elementor so um, I'm going to first install those two plugins by going to plugins, add new, and then I'll do a search for advanced custom fields. Here it is. I'll just go ahead and install and activate it. And then what we'll do after this is put in custom post type UI. Now, both of these are going to add a menu item here. Um, I will say you always have to keep advanced custom fields installed, but custom post type UI, you don't have to keep that if you don't want to. Okay, now that that's installed, I'll go to add new and we will do our search for custom post type UI. Here it is, uh, just type CPT UI. I'll do my install. Great, now I have both of those installed. So we've got CPT UI right here and then for advanced custom fields, you're just gonna see it say custom fields fields right here. So let's go ahead and create a portfolio custom post type and then we will add some custom fields. We will fill in that data and then we'll make it look great on the front end of the website. So I'm first going to click right here where it says add edit post types and then what we're going to do is really we just need to fill out this information right here. So the first thing it asks is the post type slug, then the plural label, how would we refer to this in a plural sense and how would we refer to this in a singular sense? And that's just so like right here it says posts, that's plural, and then right here it says uh, uh, add new and then it'll say post, that is singular, so it's just 
wants to know the plural and the singular way, so on the visual aspects of it, it'll all just make sense. So for the post type slug, I'm going to name this portfolio. Now for the plural label, I'm gonna name this portfolio. Uh, but for the singular layout label, this is actually a more difficult one, right? Because it wouldn't be, there's the singular of portfolio would probably be portfolio items. But instead, I'm gonna call this projects. So for the plural label here, I'm gonna say portfolio. In the singular, I will say projects. Actually, I said that wrong, project. So I will add projects to my portfolio. Then it's gonna automatically generate all of these various labels right here. And when we scroll down, we have a few more options right down here. We're not gonna use any of them, except one of them right here. We are gonna to wanna to create an archive page. And so it's listed right here where it says has archive. I'm gonna turn this to true. And right here, I don't need to put anything in because what we're gonna do is we're also gonna create an archive page. So someone could go to website uh, URL slash portfolio, see a list of the items, click on an individual item and actually go in and see the single item. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. Now right here where it says supports, this allows you to choose which elements you want in when you're creating a new portfolio item. So by default, you need the title, the editor, the featured image, but if we want an excerpt, we can have it in all of these other options right here. I'm gonna leave those as is and scroll down and click on on add post type. So what's gonna happen is now we have a post type right here that says portfolio. So if I click on edit post types, it's gonna take me back in. Now what you can do optionally is you can change this little icon here. You can change a lot of the different aspects of this. You can change where it is on this list. And all those options are gonna be found right here underneath settings. But we're not gonna do that in this video. I think just creating the post type is fine. Now we also want to do something called creating a taxonomy. And a taxonomy just, I hate using that word actually, just think of, Categories, you know, when you're creating a blog post and you can put them in categories, we're gonna do that for our blog posts. So let's just go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna choose right here where it says add edit taxonomies. And we are going to call this portfolio categories or you can name it project categories. So right here, I'm gonna put project category, uh, portfolio categories. And then for the plural label, I'm going to say portfolio categories. And then for singular, portfolio category, and then I'm gonna check on this box portfolio. This is saying I want this new category organization system. I only want it in this type of content in portfolio. I don't want it to show on posts or pages. So I'll go ahead and fill this out right now. Okay, so you can see I named it right here, portfolio categories, portfolio category. I assigned it to the portfolio. There's one additional setting that I want to make specific to this. And when we scroll all the way down here to settings, there's this option right here where it says hierarchical just change this to true. If it's on false, when you're in portfolio, it's gonna be like adding a tag where you can just add whatever tag, multiple tags and all of that. I like, or I much more prefer the way categories are added where you could just use a checkbox and put it in an existing category that you've created. So by default, when this is false, it's gonna be like a tag. When you switch it to true, it's gonna be like a category, what you would expect right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on add taxonomy economy and we're pretty much done. So now if I go to portfolio, you can see right here, I list my portfolio categories. I can add new. If I click here to all portfolios, obviously we don't have a portfolio item. I can click on add new and we're gonna see that we have the option just for a title, some content, and here it is, portfolio categories. And that's the only place you're gonna see this. So now what we need to do is add some custom fields right here that would be appropriate for a portfolio. Maybe it would be the uh, client name. Well, I'll probably use the client name for the project title, but maybe you might want the URL to them, their address or their phone number, or maybe some particulars about the project. But before that, I just wanna give you a couple tips. So on custom post type UI, you can go right here where it says tools. Now, if you didn't want to keep 
this plugin installed and active on your website. If you disabled it right now, you're going to lose your custom post type. But if you didn't want this plugin there any longer, all you have to do is come here, click on get code, and here is a snippet of code for, uh, well, here's a snippet of code, then for the uh, post type, here's a snippet of code. For the taxonomy, here's some code. So all these little snippets of code, you're gonna need to copy and paste those into your child themes uh, function file, or if you're using a plugin called Code Snippets, you'll just copy and paste it in there. For me, I think it's probably easier just to leave the plugin installed so you can go in and easily make edits or adjustments later on. Okay, so that's done. Now let's go ahead and create some custom fields. So I'll click in custom fields and the way custom fields work is you create a field group. So they're all kind of grouped together. You can add custom fields to posts if you want as well. So I'll go ahead and click on add new and let's just go ahead and name this group portfolio. Okay, now that we've named the group, we need to assign it to where we want these groups of fields to actually be available. So right here underneath rules, well location and then rules, we're gonna choose post type is equal to and we're gonna change this from post and make it say project. That's how we do it. If you also wanted these to show someplace else, you can easily click on add rule group and add it there as well. Now there are some additional settings here what we're going to do right now is we're going to click on add field and then we're going to add each field one by one so what you do here is you give your field the label then there's a field name field name is going to have no spaces it will have underscores instead of spaces and here's what I was telling you about the field type so when I go on the drop down you can see obviously there's a lot more field types than I listed in the presentation uh, but you can see them all right here and you can get comfortable with the various field types. But we're mostly gonna stick to URL and we're gonna stick to text in this video. Then right here you could choose to make it required or not, have a default value, some placeholder text, you can have some data before it or at the end of it, you can limit how many characters can go into it, and you can also have some conditional logic. And what this means is only make this field available if a prior field has a certain answer. So if you're gonna have like 30 questions, and for that real estate example, you got these questions, and you have different types of single family home or a commercial property. Well, you might not want the single family home custom fields to show if you're entering data for a commercial property. And so that's what these conditional logic options are right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a few custom fields right now, and then we'll go see how they look in the portfolio. Okay, so I went ahead and created just these three fields here. We're keeping it basic today, and it's the company URL, and you can see right here the field type is a URL. We have the project brief, and we have the company address. Now what's nice is you can change the order of these and this is how it will appear when you're actually inputting the data. So I might want the address un, uh, underneath the or above the URL like that and you can see you could just drag and drop and rearrange these very easily. So after that I'll just click on update and we should be pretty much good to go here. So let me go into portfolio click on add new and let's just see how it's looking. So right here I'm gonna put my client name, right here I'll put information about the project, right here is now where I can see these custom fields. So right here I will put the address, right here I'll put the URL and you can see how nice it is, there's that little URL kind of icon right there. And then here I can enter some project brief information. This might have been better to have be more than one line. These are all options within advanced custom fields if I wanted to do that and that is pretty much uh, the all there is to creating a custom post type and creating these custom fields you can make it as complex or as basic as you want it so now what I need to do is go ahead and fill this out with some information so I'm going to fill out maybe three or four of these and I'm going to add the image what I'm gonna do, instead of having an image field for in advanced custom fields, I'm gonna use the featured image right here to add the image of the project. And so in this case, it's gonna be just a couple website designs. I'll add that image right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I am back and what I did is I created these five 
portfolio entries here, these projects, these five different projects I've added here and filled them out and added all that information that I said it was going to add. Now what we could do right here is I'm going to go ahead and click on view. Actually here, let me open that in a new tab. And this is what it looks like. So you're going to say it does not look fantastic, uh, but it works. So here we go. We've got this right here. This is my featured image. Then we have the name right here of the project. And then we have some Lorem Dinsum text. Now you can see it's not showing any of my custom fields. I'm not getting the URL in here. I'm not getting the company address in here either, or that little short brief. Okay, so that is what we need to do now. So everything we've done up until now is open to anyone. I've used free tools and uh, the, nothing costs anything. And this step, I'm going to shift gears and start using Elementor Pro. Like I said, you can visit wpcrafter.com slash Elementor and the link will be in the video description box down below if you don't already have it. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm gonna to go to Elementor and I'm gonna click on my templates. And this is where we would create various templates. So what we're gonna do is create one and assign it to portfolio items. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on add new template. Right here under select, I'm gonna see right here where it says single. And then right here it says select post type. And this is where I'm gonna see project, which is that post type we've created. And so for you, whatever you name the post type, that's where you're gonna see it in that list. And I'll go ahead and give this a title. So I've decided to name this portfolio item template like that. I'll go ahead and click on create template and it's gonna take us right on into Elementor for the first time. Now, once we're in Elementor, we first need to tell it that this is gonna be for a portfolio item and select a specific portfolio item. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this cause we'll just start from scratch, I guess. So what we need to do here is go right here where it says settings, click on that. And then right here where it says preview settings, click right there as well. Now it says right here for project and now it's already chosen one, which is local business, but you could enter in any of the ones that you wanted to that we've already created. That one works fine for me. I'll click on apply and preview. We haven't obviously created anything with Elementor yet, so there's not really much to a preview. All right, so I'm gonna go back here and let's go ahead and we will add our post title. So right here where it says uh, the list of the elements, these are ones that are going to be specific to the bits and pieces of information in the portfolio that we've assigned this to. So if I drag and drop this right here, it should say local business, which is the title of the portfolio item that we're previewing. So this is what the title would look like on the individual portfolio items as people look at them. So let's go ahead and style this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and center it. I'm not gonna to do too much in this video. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and center it. I'm gonna go right here into the section properties and let's go ahead and add a little bit of minimum height to this. Uh, let's go something like that. And then what I'll do for the style, I'll click here, I'll go on topography, and I'm going to change the topography to make it white. So now that's white. And then for the background, I'll go ahead and put a background color in. So let's just go ahead and choose a uh, classic, and I'll choose a color right here. You can see now the title. I'll just go something like that. We're just keep it real basic. You can style this however you want. You can even use that featured image as a background by clicking on dynamic, but we're gonna do this here. So we've got that done. And now right here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus and I'm gonna do two like that. So now we have these two columns. Right here, let's go back to our elements and I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the featured image right there. And we know the featured image is that thumbnail item right there. Okay, so we've got that. And let's go ahead and add some info here on the right. So I'm gonna go back here as well. So let's go ahead and add the post content right here. That's gonna be some lorem dim sum text. There it is. Now what I also wanna do is go here and I'm gonna choose where it says text editor and I'll drag that to the top. And instead of the text right here, I'm gonna click where it says dynamic 
and then I'm going to scroll down to ACF. So this is where we're now able to pull in the data in those custom fields for that data separation. I'll click right here where it says ACF field. And then what you do is you click on it again, right here where it says key, you do a drop down and it's going to show you the different custom fields where the type, the data type of that custom field is appropriate to go in this element. So for here, I wanted to show that project brief uh, just like that. And you can see it right there. However, I'm going to style it a little differently. So I think I'm going to leave it aligned the way that it is. Uh, I'm going to just change my topography a little bit. I'm going to make it, uh, let's just make it a little bit larger so it's different and styled differently. And then I'm going to go ahead and make it bold. So I'm going to add a little bit of weight to it, maybe something like that. So this would be kind of the, the just the short brief of the project. And then right here, I'm going to have my post content. Okay, so let's pretty this up just a little bit. I'm going to add some padding and spacing so things aren't all kind of next to each other. So first I'm going to go to my section settings right here and then I'm going to click on advanced and I'll add a little bit of margin to the top and the bottom just to push it away from the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and put in a 50 right there. So that's fine, just pushing it away a little bit. Uh, that's it. And then for the image, I'll click on the image. I'm going to go to advanced right here and I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of padding on this image so that it's not as big. There we go. We have that right there. And then what I like to do is for this column, it's obviously not going to take the same height as the image here. So what I'm going to do is center this with the image. So what you do is you click right here on the column and then right here you would choose the content position and we could choose middle and so there we have it so we'll have our image here for each of the templates and then our content would would be like this right here so now I just need to add those other two custom fields which was the address of the client and then I will add the URL maybe a button to the website or something like that so let's just go ahead and do the button right now so I'm going to scroll down to button I'll add add that right here and we're going to do the same thing with that dynamic content so right here is for the link I'll click right here for dynamic scroll to the bottom click on ACF URL field right here and then I will click on it again just like this and then for the key I'm going to choose the company URL so now when someone clicks here it's going to go to that URL so let's just change the text to visit project website. Now I'm not going to spend the time to style the actual button, but it's very simple to do with Elementor. So now we just need to add that address. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did for right here. I'm going to go ahead and add the text editor like this. And uh, actually here, I don't know where the best place is. Let's just put it um, underneath right here, whatever. I'll click on dynamic again, scroll down to the bottom, click on ACF field, then click it again. And then for the key, this time I'm going to choose company address. And then there's going to be the company address. But you know what? I might want to put uh, above the company address the the uh, title again because that's going to be the name of the business for me. So I'm going to go ahead and drag another one of those out. So I'm going to go right here to post title. I'm going to put it above like that. But see, it's putting it with an H tag. That's why it's so stinking big like this. So what I can do is go here and change it to P to make it like that and then play around with my spacing a little bit uh, to make them not be so far apart like that. Another way of doing this actually is I can right click and delete it. I could have done the same thing that I did right here. So I could go right here to actually here. I'm going to right click duplicate and then on the top one I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click right here for the ACF field and just change this by clicking on the X to clear that out. Click on dynamic and then choose right here where it says post title. 
there we go and that's another way of doing it and then playing around with that a little bit so this looks kind of nice to me so I'm gonna go ahead and click on publish and it's going to allow me to choose where I want to assign this so I'm going to do a portfolio again for all the portfolio items I'll click on publish so now what's going to happen I'm going to get out of Elementor and we'll take a look and see how this looks now that I've applied it to each portfolio item so I'm going to click right here on the hamburger click on exit to dashboard this is how it used to look now let me go into my portfolio and let's go ahead I'm going to open this in a new tab so this is the old style and this right here is the new style it already looks a lot better and obviously I haven't spent a whole lot of time but let's just go ahead and see how some of these other items right here look okay so here was the local business you can see now I'm looking at the finance one this has changed everything is different this I put the same text in each one of them that's why it's the same and you can see right there life coach restaurant it looks beautiful all of it uh, and then we've got this kindergarten one here for the URL I made it go to my website so let's click on that and there it is it works it goes straight on over to my website so this is without a theme builder and this right here is with a theme builder so now what we need to do is create an archive page and so we set that to be the URL of the website slash portfolio so right here is what it looks like here it is the URL portfolio and you can see it's using the default style for listing out blog posts or an archive page so what is nice with Elementor we can create something different for this as well so let's just go ahead and jump on into that I'm gonna do the same thing go to Elementor my templates and then I'm gonna click on add new and this time I'm gonna choose right here where it says archive so I'm gonna go ahead and name this I just named it portfolio archive I'll click on create template and then we'll jump on in and do the same thing where we assign it and then we could preview it as we go actually I could use one of these pre-designed archives to make life a little faster and easier uh, but we don't have to we can go all custom here so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the settings I'm gonna click on preview settings and I'm gonna change this archive down here to portfolio I archive just like that click on apply and preview like I said it's probably not going to show anything because we don't have anything here so let's go ahead and click on the dial pad in Elementor and now it knows we're creating an archive so it offers us these various archive options and right here is archive posts and when I drag and drop it right here it's automatically knows we're creating this for the portfolio so it's going to go ahead and show us those portfolio options I personally prefer the card skin so let's go ahead and apply the card skin and then we can tweak it however we want I know for me I usually don't like to show comments or dates so we can go ahead and remove those I don't like showing the excerpt like that and for this we might want to center the style here so we can go ahead and tweak that as well if we wanted let's go to style and center there it is we could do that and we might even want to remove the avatar right there so I would scroll down here and turn off avatar sorry if I'm going quick some of you guys are already super familiar with Elementor alright so you can do anything else that you want to this page I like to add just a little bit of margin push things away so I'm gonna go ahead and put a value of 50 in go ahead and click on publish and this is where we add our condition I'll click add condition and instead of all archives I'm going to scroll down to where it says portfolio archive I don't want this applying to my blog post I just want it on the portfolio I'll click on portfolio archive click on publish and then I'm gonna go ahead and exit out I'll click on the hamburger click on exit to dashboard and now I'm out of there okay so here is what it looked like and this is just default styling from the theme I obviously didn't put enough effort in but this is what it looks like right now and it's showing each of these I probably would have made this image look a little different in the preview here but you get the point you can tweak this to your heart's content I can customize every aspect of of it because I'm using a theme builder so in this video we used the Elementor theme builder right here and we created this beautiful 
portfolio website or we added a portfolio to an existing website and you saw how simple that was. Now you can add this for making event listings. You can make any type of listing that you want, portfolio items. The, the options of what you can do are literally limitless to your imagination. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. Now, I know I went a little fast in this video. We have a comment section down below where you can go down there and ask me any questions about this. I'll do my best to answer them in a timely fashion. If you have found some video a value in this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up to support me. And remember to subscribe, click on the notification bell if you wanna know when I've uploaded new videos just like this one. So hey, remember, if you don't have Elementor Pro, I've got a link in the video description box when you click on that and purchase it. I give you access to a free training course. Well, it's not a free training course. I give you free access to a paid training course, Elementor Essentials. I give that to you for free when you purchase Elementor through the all the information's on my website. You could just go check that out if that interests you and you don't have Elementor. Hey, I want to thank you for taking your time to learn how to do more with WordPress and spending this time with me on this video. Other than that, I will see you in the next video.